a little Sunday afternoon business. I just got some more Sour Diesel, a.k.a. Sunshine for the Soul. Let's get into this quick mob story about something that happened last month. Salute to my man Joe O for sending me the story. Let's get right into business. But before we start, let me introduce the other government. This is the new mob series that I'm putting out. We're already, I believe, two chapters in. Chapter 3 comes out tomorrow. Chapter 4 comes out Thursday. Each story will come out at 4.20 p.m. And this is a more serious take on the mafia in a chronological order, starting at some point in the beginning I chose the 1920s, 1930s. And this is written by me and my friend Ray Heights. And we're trying to write this in a thrilling crime, true crime, crime noir fashion. And we're really putting some time into these stories, so I hope you enjoy them. The game is over as far as mob stories is concerned. So the other government, look for it. It's on the Ruckus Radio podcast. Spread the word, share the stories, and please enjoy them, because I enjoy them. In fact, here's the schedule right here. Let's get into some business. Mob hitman Nicholas Calabrese, who testified against brother and other top mobsters at Family Secrets trial, dead at 80. Mr. Calabrese, who took part in a hit made famous by the actor Joe Pesci in the movie Casino, had a target on his back and remained out of sight since he ratted on the mob. Now, you know my policy. Once a person passes away, we don't use the word disgracia to describe them. They're dead. You don't talk ill of the dead. That's bad for business. So let's just get to the business. Nicholas Calabrese, one of the city's most notorious mobsters, that city being Chicago, who admitted to killing 14 people and who was perhaps the most important turncoat witness in Chicago mob history is dead. Detail of the hitman's death are not available and for good reason. Mr. Calabrese entered the federal government's witness program after he began cooperating with prosecutors before the bombshell family secrets trial in 2007. At trial, he testified against a group of top mobsters that included his brother, Frank Calabrese Sr., who he claimed committed the majority of the 14 murders alongside him. For his cooperation, Nicholas Calabrese was spared life in prison, but he did receive a 12-year sentence that he served under special federal protection. That must be nice, 12 years. Complete PC. It's unclear exactly when he was released from prison or what his life has been since. Quote, obviously he did not die as a result of the mob getting revenge, said a source who, along with two other sources, confirmed his death. Nicholas Calabrese wasn't the only family member to testify against his brother at trial. Frank's son, Frank Calabrese Jr., not only testified but wore a wire to record his father. Jesus. Detail of Nicholas Calabrese's testimony was captured by former Sun Times reporter Steve Warmbier. Quote, looking more like a senior citizen heading out of an early bird special than outfit killer, Nicholas William Calabrese took the witness stand Monday and calmly told jurors how he murdered people for the mob who his brother Frank and with the reputed head of the Chicago mobs, James Marcello. Despite admitting to 14 murders, Nicholas Calabrese, who was 64 at the time, balked at being called a serial killer. I am a killer, Calabrese said on the stand. I am not a serial killer. Yeah, I, I kind of see that, right? I mean, it was all business. Serial killers are, you know what I mean? They're fucking disgraciad serial killers. That doesn't make it better, but we understand business, right? This is the life. Nick also drew back the curtain on the most infamous modern-day Chicago mob hit, the slayings of the outfits man in Las Vegas, Anthony Spilotra, and his brother Michael in the basement of a suburban Chicago home. He was there, holding the legs of Michael while the late Louis de Mucciboli strangled him with a rope, Nick testified. Just moments before, he greeted Mike with, Hi, Mike, how you doing? As Mike entered the basement of a suburban Chicago home. You gotta watch out for those basements, huh? Following after him, Anthony stepped into the basement and realized his fate. He had one request. All I heard when he come down was, Can I say a prayer? Nick testified. I didn't hear no more, said Calabrese, who was too busy helping kill Michael Spilotra to see exactly what happened to Anthony. It was the first eyewitness description of the murders. Nicholas tied one of the men on trial in the famous secrets case to the slings. 
He said reputed top Chicago mob boss James Marcello drove Calabrese and two other men to the home where the Spilotras were murdered. I mean, it was all business. The family secrets trial resulted in multiple convictions of top mobsters, including James Marcello, Frank Calabrese Sr., and Joey the Clown Lombardo. Calabrese Sr. and Lombardo died in prison. May they rest in peace. And as far as all these names, Nicholas, Frank, Mike, Anthony, Joey the Clown, James Marcello, we are going to be doing stories, in-depth stories, thrilling, true crime noir type stories for everybody. When I'm done, there is going to be such a collection of stories on YouTube, and that is my gift to y'all for helping this channel grow and being honorable listeners, man. I really, really, really appreciate that. Mob Stories 3, Big Rich, Queens, where we conduct business. Sour Diesel. Hey, I hope you wiped your feet on the rug before you came in. The rules are the rules, okay? So wipe your feet on the rug. Don't forget the other government. New story out tomorrow at 4.20 p.m. The Morello Crime Family. I hope you guys enjoy it. Be well. Enjoy your Sunday. Big Rich Queens. We will talk soon. Salute.